Attention, what you are about to discover will shake the structures of your world. While the masses sleep, a quiet revolution is underway, uniting religions under a banner that promises peace but hides a mortal danger. Believe me, what you've always thought about faith and salvation is about to be turned upside down. Amazingly, the Holy Scriptures themselves predicted this moment. And the most shocking, you may be inadvertently participating in this global plan without even realizing it. But don't worry, because in the next few minutes, you will have access to information that few know, capable of protecting you and your loved ones from the greatest deception in history. Get ready for a journey that will challenge everything you believe in and reveal truths that the powerful don't want you to know. And the best? By the end, you'll have the tools to discern the truth in a world of lies. Don't waste a second. Click now on the registration button and activate the bell. Your spiritual salvation may depend on it. And stay until the end for a powerful prayer that will change your life. Time is running out. Are you ready for the truth? At the dawn of the 21st century, we witness an unprecedented move toward global unity. This phenomenon, far from being mere coincidence, echoes the prophetic warnings contained in Scripture. The prophet Daniel, millennia ago, envisioned this scenario. Many will run to and fro, and knowledge will multiply. Daniel 12.4 This passage not only predicted technological advancement, but also the global interconnectedness we experience today. As nations draw closer together, borders fade, not only geographically, but also ideologically and spiritually. This drive for unification spans all spheres of society, political, economic, and crucially, religious. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, spoke about unity, but in a very different context. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, Ephesians 4.4. 4. This unity, however, is grounded in Christ, not in human consensus. The current movement for global unity, while seemingly benevolent, raises profound questions about its true nature and purpose. Scripture warns us to be wise as serpents and simple as doves, Matthew 10.16. This wisdom is crucial as we navigate the turbulent waters of globalization. The book of Revelation, in particular, paints a vivid picture of a future where a forced unity leads to oppression. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to be put a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. Revelation 13:16. This verse suggests a system of global control disguised as progress and unity. However, we must not give in to fear or isolationism. Our calling as followers of Christ is to be salt of the earth and light of the world. Matthew 5:13 to 14. This implies critical engagement with global trends, always anchored in biblical truth. The prophet Micah reminds us, he hath declared unto thee, O man, that which is good. And what is it that the Lord requires of you but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? Micah 6 8. This passage guides us to pursue the common good without compromising our faith or integrity. The search for global unity often presents itself under the pretext of peace and progress. However, the Apostle Paul warns us, for when they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them. 1 Thessalonians 5.3 This warning is not a call to pessimism, but to spiritual vigilance. We must carefully examine proposals for global unity in light of Scripture, discerning their true intentions and potential consequences. The challenge for Christians in this scenario is to maintain a balanced perspective. On the one hand, we are called to love our neighbor and seek peace with all, Romans 12:18). On the other, we must remain steadfast in our faith and values. The book of Proverbs reminds us, do not remove the old landmarks that your fathers set, Proverbs 22:28). 28. 
This wisdom encourages us to cherish our spiritual heritage while engaging with the ever-changing world. In the midst of these global trends, it is crucial to remember that our primary citizenship is not earthly, but heavenly. As Paul wrote to the Philippians, but our citizenship is in heaven, from where we also await the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 3.20 This eternal perspective allows us to navigate the complexities of the present with hope and purpose. We do not reject the world, but see it through the lens of eternity, seeking to be agents of positive transformation. As we watch these global events unfold, we are called to an active faith-based response. The prophet Isaiah exhorts us, cease to trust in man whose breath is in his nostrils. Isaiah 2.22 This passage reminds us to put our trust in God, not in human systems, no matter how appealing they may seem. Our role is to be ambassadors for Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.20, representing his kingdom in the midst of the changes of this world. Always ready to give an account of the hope that is in us, 1 Peter 3.15, and looking forward to the fulfillment of God's promises to mankind. The prophetic warnings contained in the book of Revelation resonate with renewed urgency in our day. The Apostle John, upon receiving these revelations, was instructed, Seal not up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Revelation 22.10 This passage suggests that the messages of Revelation are particularly relevant to the generations approaching the end times. Just as the Old Testament prophets warned Israel of coming judgments, Revelation serves as a beacon for the contemporary church, illuminating the signs of the times. One of the most intriguing aspects of these prophecies is the prediction of the emergence of a one-world religion. This concept finds echoes in Revelation 17, which describes a great harlot sitting on many waters, symbolizing a global religious system that exerts influence over peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, Revelation 17.15 This prophetic image warns believers of the temptation to compromise the truth in the name of unity. The prophet Isaiah centuries earlier warned, Woe to those who call evil good, and good evil, Isaiah 5.20, a warning that applies perfectly to the scenario of moral relativism and religious syncretism that we observe today. The exclusivity of Christ as Savior is a fundamental pillar of Christianity that is threatened in this context. Jesus stated unequivocally, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. This statement stands in stark contrast to the idea that all religions are equally valid paths to God. The Apostle Peter before the Sanhedrin boldly proclaimed, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Acts 4.12 These passages reaffirm the centrality of Christ in the Christian faith, a principle that cannot be diluted or compromised. The danger of a global religious union that disregards the uniqueness of Christ is not only theological, but also practical. Paul warned the Corinthians, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Because what society does justice have with injustice? And what fellowship hath light with darkness? 2 Corinthians 6.14 This passage reminds us of the importance of maintaining the integrity of faith in a world that seeks to homogenize beliefs. The challenge for Christians is to stand firm in their convictions as they navigate an increasingly complex and interconnected religious landscape. As interfaith movements gain momentum, Christians are called to keen discernment. Jesus warned, take heed that no one deceives you, Matthew 24, 4. This warning is particularly relevant in an age of abundant information and rapid dissemination of ideas. The prophet Jeremiah provides valuable perspective. Thus saith the Lord, stand in the paths, and see and ask for the paths of old, what is the good way, and walk in it, and you shall find rest for your souls. Jeremiah 6.16 
This passage invites us to critically examine new religious trends in light of the eternal truths of Scripture. Resistance to these changes does not mean isolation or hostility. On the contrary, Christians are called to be salt of the earth and light of the world, Matthew 5, 13, 14, positively influencing society without losing their distinctive identity. The Apostle Paul modeled this approach in Athens, where he engaged with local beliefs without compromising the gospel, Acts 17, 22 through 31. This example teaches us to interact with other faiths in a respectful way, but always maintaining the integrity of the gospel. The reaffirmation of faith in the face of these global changes is not a passive task. Peter exhorts, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts and always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. 1 Peter 3.15 this preparation involves diligent study of scripture, a life of prayer and fellowship with other believers. Psalm 119, 105 declares, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This truth underscores the importance of God's word as our compass in times of change and uncertainty. The prophetic warnings of Revelation and all of Scripture call us to active spiritual watchfulness. We are challenged to maintain the purity of faith without isolating ourselves from the world, to discern the signs of the times without succumbing to fear or paranoia. As followers of Christ, our response must be grounded in love, truth and hope. May we, like the Apostle Paul, say, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith and 2 Timothy 4.7, remaining faithful to the truth of the gospel as we navigate the complexities of the last days. Pope Francis's recent statements on religious plurality have generated waves of discussion in the Christian world. His assertion that all religions are paths to God echoes the sentiment of many who seek unity in a divided world. However, this perspective raises profound questions about the exclusive nature of salvation in Christ. The prophet Isaiah, centuries ago, proclaimed, I am the Lord, and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God, Isaiah 45.5. This divine declaration lays a foundation for understanding the uniqueness of the biblical God in the midst of religious plurality. The idea of multiple paths to God stands in stark contrast to the teaching of Jesus, who stated, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14.6 This exclusivity is not born of arrogance, but of the unique nature of Christ's incarnation and sacrifice. The Apostle Paul elaborates on this in 1 Timothy 2.5, declaring, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. These passages clearly establish the centrality of Christ in God's plan of salvation. The tension between inclusivity and exclusivity is not new in church history. In the Old Testament, we see God warning Israel against religious syncretism. You shall not follow other gods, the gods of other peoples who are around you. Deuteronomy 6.14 This command reflects God's concern for the purity of faith and true worship. In the current context, the Pope's statement raises questions about how to maintain the integrity of the gospel while pursuing interfaith dialogue. The claim that all religions lead to God also challenges the traditional understanding of Christian mission. Jesus commissioned his followers, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Matthew 28, 19. If all religions were equally valid, what would be the purpose of this mandate? The Apostle Peter, speaking to the Jewish leaders, boldly declared, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Acts 4.12 These passages underline the urgency and specificity of the Christian message. However, it is important to approach this issue with humility and love. The Apostle Paul, 
in his letter to the Ephesians, exhorts us to speak the truth in love. Ephesians 4.15 This entails holding firm to our conviction in the uniqueness of Christ, while treating those of other faiths with respect and compassion. Jesus himself demonstrated this balance in his interaction with the Samaritan woman, John 4 where he affirmed the truth about true worship without denigrating the sincerity of her faith. The concern about a possible dilution of the gospel is understandable. The Apostle Paul warned the Galatians, I marvel that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ to another gospel. Galatians 1.6 this warning resonates today, reminding us of the importance of preserving the essence of the Christian message. However, we are also called to always be ready to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that is in you. 1 Peter 3.15 Which implies respectful engagement with those who have different perspectives. The challenge for Christians today is to navigate these turbulent theological waters with wisdom and discernment. The book of Proverbs reminds us, the heart of the discerning one acquires knowledge, the ears of the wise seek him. Proverbs 18.15 This encourages us to seek a deeper understanding of the issues at stake, not just reacting emotionally to controversial statements, Pope Francis' statements on religious plurality invite us to a serious reflection on our faith. We are challenged to reaffirm our conviction in the uniqueness of Christ, while demonstrating love and respect for those who think differently. As followers of Jesus, our response must be grounded in Scripture, tempered with grace, and motivated by love. May we, like the psalmist, declare, Your word is a lamp to my feet, and a light to my path. Psalm 119.105 Seeking divine guidance as we navigate these complex issues of faith and relationship with other faiths. The tension between Christian doctrine and the movement toward a global religion is a topic of increasing relevance in our day. This dichotomy brings us back to the challenge faced by the prophet Elijah on Mount Carmel, where he confronted the prophets of Baal, declaring, how long will ye limp between two thoughts? If the Lord is God, follow him. If it is Baal, follow him. 1 Kings 18.21 This passage vividly illustrates the call to exclusive allegiance to God, a fundamental tenet of the Christian faith that is challenged by the idea of a unified global religion. The concept of religious unity and tolerance, while appealing at first glance, may conceal a subtle but significant deviation from central biblical teachings. The Apostle Paul warned the Colossians, Take heed that no one takes you captive through philosophy and vain deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the rudiments of the world, and not according to Christ. Colossians 2.8 this warning resonates strongly today, reminding us of the importance of discerning between human wisdom and divine truth. The exclusivity of the gospel of Jesus Christ is a non-negotiable pillar of the Christian faith. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. He established a fundamental truth that cannot be diluted or compromised. This statement is not an expression of intolerance, but rather an affirmation of the unique nature of the salvation offered by Christ. The prophet Isaiah, centuries earlier, had already proclaimed, Look to me and be saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. Isaiah 45.22, prefiguring the uniqueness of salvation in Christ. The incompatibility between Christian doctrine and the idea of multiple paths to salvation is further emphasized in the words of the Apostle Peter, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Acts 4.12 This categorical statement directly challenges any notion that other religions can offer an alternative path to God. 
It is a call for Christians to stand firm in the truth of the gospel, even in the face of social and cultural pressures to adopt a more inclusive vision. However, steadfastness in faith should not be confused with arrogance or lack of love. The Apostle Paul reminds us, but following the truth in love, we may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Ephesians 4.15 this verse challenges us to maintain a delicate balance between faithfulness to the truth and love for others. When faced with ideas contrary to Christian doctrine, we are called to respond with grace and truth, as exemplified by Jesus in his interaction with the Samaritan woman, John 4, where he affirmed the truth without diminishing her dignity. The dilution of Christian doctrine in favor of a universal ecumenism is, in fact, a subtle form of deception. Jesus warned, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Matthew 7.15 This warning reminds us of the importance of carefully discerning ideas and movements that may seem benign, but actually lead people astray from the true path of salvation. The prophet Jeremiah echoed a similar sentiment. Thus saith the Lord, stand in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, what is the good way, and walk in it, and you shall find rest for your souls. Jeremiah 6.16 In a world that increasingly values inclusivity and relativism, Christians are called to be salt of the earth and light of the world. Matthew 5.13.14 this means maintaining the integrity of the faith while engaging in a meaningful way with the society around them. The challenge is to remain true to the truth of the gospel without isolating yourself from the world. As Paul instructed Timothy, guard what is well committed to you by the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. 2 Timothy 1.14 Believers are encouraged to preserve and faithfully pass on Christian doctrine to future generations. The tension between Christian doctrine and the movement toward a global religion invites us to deep reflection and renewed commitment to the truth of the gospel. We are called to stand firm in the faith while showing love and respect for those who think differently. May we, like the psalmist, declare, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, Psalm 119-105, seeking divine wisdom to navigate through these challenging times. May each of us commit to diligently studying the scriptures, living their truth in love, and sharing the gospel with grace and conviction, remaining faithful to Christ in a world of constant change. Deception is a recurring theme in scripture, from the Garden of Eden to end-time prophecies. The Apostle Paul, in his second letter to the Thessalonians, warns, Let no one deceive you in any way. 2 Thessalonians 2.3 This warning resonates with growing urgency in our era, where the idea of a unified global religion gains traction under the guise of peace and harmony. Yet, as the prophet Jeremiah warned, they heal the wound of my people superficially, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Jeremiah 6.14, we must be alert to superficial promises of unity that can hide deep spiritual dangers. The biblical narrative repeatedly presents us with the concept of a large-scale deception in the last days. Jesus, in his prophetic discourse, warns, For false Christs and false prophets shall arise, and they shall do great signs and wonders, that they shall deceive even the elect, if it were possible. Matthew 24, 24. This passage underlines the sophistication and persuasiveness of the deception that is to come, capable of deceiving even the most faithful. The Apostle John, in his first epistle, exhorts us, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see if they are from God. 1 John 4, 1. Emphasizing the need for keen spiritual discernment. The idea of a unified global religion as an instrument of control finds parallels in the Tower of Babel narrative, Genesis 11, 1 through 9. 
In that episode, mankind sought unity and power outside of God's will, resulting in confusion and dispersion. Similarly, the book of Revelation describes a global religious system that opposes God. I saw a woman riding on a scarlet beast, having in his hand a golden cup full of abominations, Revelation 17, 3, 4. This symbolic image depicts a religious entity that wields global influence, but is actually aligned with forces that oppose God. The Antichrist, a central figure in this scenario of deception, is described in the scriptures as someone who will present himself as a solution to the world's problems. The Apostle Paul describes him as the man of lawlessness who opposes and exalts himself against everything that is called God or worshipped so as to sit in the temple of God, presenting himself as God. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, 4 This description warns of the danger of charismatic leaders who may emerge promising peace and unity, but whose real intentions are contrary to divine truth. In the face of these warnings, Christians are called to constant spiritual vigilance. The Apostle Peter urges, Be sober and watchful. Your adversary the devil prowls about like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. 1 Peter 5.8 This spiritual sobriety involves a diligent study of scripture, a life of prayer and fellowship with other believers. As the psalmist states, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you, Psalm 11911, indicating that deep knowledge of God's word is our best defense against deception, resisting social and religious pressures that seek to compromise the faith requires courage and conviction. We can draw inspiration from biblical characters like Daniel, who remained faithful to God in the midst of a hostile culture. The book of Daniel relates, Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the king's fine delicacies, Daniel 1.8, illustrating the importance of setting clear boundaries and maintaining spiritual integrity, even when doing so goes against the prevailing cultural norms. It is crucial to remember that while the scenario may seem bleak, the ultimate victory belongs to God. The Apostle John, in his apocalyptic vision, declares, They will war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will overcome them, for He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Revelation 17, 14. This promise assures us that despite deception and challenge, God's truth will prevail. Our responsibility is to remain faithful and vigilant, trusting in God's sovereignty and faithfulness. The warning about deception in the last days is a call to action for all believers. We are challenged to deepen our knowledge of Scripture, strengthen our relationship with God through prayer and fellowship, and exercise spiritual discernment in all areas of our lives. May each of us echo the psalmist's words, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119.105, allowing God's truth to guide our decisions and actions in an increasingly confusing and deceptive world. May we be beacons of truth and hope, sharing the gospel with love and conviction, and remaining steadfast in the faith until Christ returns. The prophecy of a one-world religion, described in the book of Revelation, has intrigued scholars and believers over the centuries. The Apostle John, in his apocalyptic vision, portrays a global religious entity with unprecedented influence. I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, having in his hand a golden cup full of abominations. Revelation 17, 3, 4. This symbolic image suggests a religious system that, while seemingly glorious, is fundamentally in opposition to God's purposes. As we observe current ecumenical and interfaith movements, we are challenged to discern whether we are witnessing the first steps toward the fulfillment of this prophecy. The concept of a global religious union is not new. In the Old Testament, we find the account of the Tower of Babel, where humanity sought unity and power outside of God's will. Come, 
Let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top reaches to the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves. Genesis 11.4 This episode serves as a warning about the dangers of seeking spiritual unity at the expense of divine truth. Similarly, contemporary movements that seek to unify religions under a common umbrella may be inadvertently paving the way for a similar scenario. The idea that this unified religion will not be centered on the worship of the biblical God, but on a deceptive figure, finds parallels in Jesus' warnings. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and will do great signs and wonders, that if it were possible, they would deceive even the elect. Matthew 24, 24. This passage suggests that deception in the last days will be so sophisticated and persuasive that even the most dedicated believers may be tempted to turn astray. The Apostle Paul also warns about the man of lawlessness, who opposes and rises up against everything that is called God or is an object of worship, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, 4, indicating a figure who will present himself as an alternative to true worship. The consolidation of power and control through religion is not a new concept in human history. The prophet Daniel faced a similar challenge when King Nebuchadnezzar commanded everyone to worship his statue, Daniel 3. This episode foreshadows how a world authority could use religion as an instrument of control. In the current context, we must be vigilant of any system or leader who seeks to unify religious beliefs under a single banner, potentially compromising the truth of the gospel. Preparing for times of great deception and persecution is a recurring theme in Scripture. Peter exhorts, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial that is coming upon you, as though a strange thing happened to you. 1 Peter 4.12 This passage reminds us that challenges to our faith should not take us by surprise, but rather find ourselves prepared and resolute. Preparation involves diligent study of the scriptures, a life of constant prayer, and fellowship with other believers. As Paul instructed Timothy, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 it is crucial to understand that the union of religions, as prophesied, is only the beginning of a broader process. The book of Revelation describes a series of events that will culminate in Christ's return and the establishment of His eternal kingdom. In this interval, believers are called to remain faithful and vigilant. Jesus taught, Watch ye therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour. Matthew 25, 13. This vigilance is not passive waiting, but an active engagement in God's mission, sharing the gospel and living according to kingdom principles. Despite the dark nature of these prophecies, it is important to remember that the ultimate message of revelation is one of hope and victory. John writes, they will fight against the lamb, but the lamb will overcome them because he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, Revelation 17, 14. This promise assures us that regardless of the challenges we face, ultimate victory belongs to Christ and those who remain faithful to him. Our response to these prophecies must be one of renewed trust in God and a strengthened commitment to his truth. The prophecy of a one world religion calls us to increase spiritual vigilance and a deeper commitment to biblical truth. We are challenged to discern the signs of the times, to stand firm in our faith, and to be light in an increasingly confusing world. May each of us echo the words of the psalmist, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, 105 Allowing God's truth to guide our decisions and actions, May we be faithful ambassadors of Christ, sharing the gospel with love and conviction, and looking forward with hope to the day when all prophecies will be fulfilled and Christ will reign supreme. Lucifer's role in global deception is a theme that has echoed since the dawn of creation. In the Garden of Eden, 
we find the first record of this deception where the serpent cunningly asks, has God said, you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Genesis 3.1. This subtle distortion of divine truth sets a pattern that repeats itself throughout human history. The prophet Isaiah offers a deeper insight into Lucifer's nature, describing his fall. How art thou fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the morning? Isaiah 14.12 This passage reveals not only Lucifer's heavenly origin, but also his unbridled ambition that led him to rebellion against God. Jesus, in his earthly ministry, clearly identified Satan's deceitful nature, declaring, He was a murderer from the beginning, and he did not stand on the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of lies. John 8:44. This characterization of Lucifer as the father of lies is critical to understanding his role in the global deception of the last days. His strategy has not changed since Eden. He continues to distort the truth, sow doubts about God's word, and offer attractive but false alternatives to the divine will. The creation of a unified global religion as an instrument of deception finds parallels in the Tower of Babel narrative. Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top reaches to the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves. Genesis 11.4 This human effort at unification and self-exaltation reflects Lucifer's desire to rise above God. In the contemporary context, the search for a universal spirituality that accommodates all faiths can be seen as a modern manifestation of this same impulse, orchestrated by Lucifer to divert humanity from the true worship of God. The Apostle Paul warns of the sophistication of this deception, and no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light, 2 Corinthians 11.14. This ability of Lucifer to present himself as something good and desirable is particularly dangerous in the context of a global religion. He will utilize half-truths and seductive promises, appealing to humanity's deepest desires for peace, unity, and purpose. As the prophet Jeremiah lamented, the heart is more deceitful than anything else, and its disease is incurable. Who is able to understand it? Jeremiah 17.9, indicating human vulnerability to such deception. The potency of this deception is such that Jesus warned, For false Christs and false prophets shall arise, and they shall do great signs and wonders, that they would deceive even the elect, if it were possible. Matthew 24.24 24. This passage suggests that even those with knowledge of Scripture can be vulnerable if they are not deeply rooted in faith. The Apostle Peter reinforces this warning, Be sober and watchful. Your adversary the devil prowls about like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. 1 Peter 5.8 Spiritual vigilance and discernment therefore become crucial for believers in the last days. The establishment of a global religious system by the Antichrist, aided by Lucifer, is vividly described in Revelation. I saw a beast come up out of the sea, and they worshipped the dragon, because he gave the beast his authority. Revelation 13, 1, 4. This symbolic image depicts a religious political power that receives its authority directly from Satan. The persecution that will follow those who refuse to submit to this system is a recurring theme in biblical prophecies, echoing Jesus' words, You will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Matthew 24, 9. The ability to discern the truth in the midst of this global deception will be vital. Paul exhorts, Test everything. Hold fast to what is good. 1 Thessalonians 5:21. This discernment is not merely intellectual, but profoundly spiritual. The psalmist declares, The revelation of your words enlightens and gives understanding to the simple, Psalm 119.130, emphasizing the importance of God's word as our compass in these challenging times. Jesus promised, 
you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. John 8.32 Assuring that those who remain faithful to divine truth will be protected from Lucifer's deception. Lucifer's role in the global deception of the last days is an urgent call for believers to deepen their faith and increase their spiritual vigilance. We are challenged to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand firm against the wiles of the devil, Ephesians 6, 11. This involves a diligent study of scripture, a life of constant prayer and fellowship with other believers. May each of us echo the psalmist's words, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, 105, allowing God's truth to guide us through the deceptive times ahead. Let us be ambassadors of truth in a world of deception, sharing the gospel with love and conviction and remaining steadfast in the faith until Christ returns. As we approach the end times, it is crucial that we remain vigilant and steadfast in our faith. The biblical prophecies about a one-world religion and Lucifer's role in global deception are not mere distant warnings, but realities that we are beginning to witness. As followers of Christ, we are called to discern truth in the midst of deception, to remain faithful to the teachings of Scripture, and to be a light in a world increasingly darkened by falsehood. May we strengthen each other, diligently study God's Word, and be prepared to face the challenges ahead, confident in Christ's ultimate victory. Now let's say a prayer. Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace with humble hearts and open minds. In an increasingly confusing and deceitful world, we cry out for your divine wisdom and discernment. Lord, you who are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, know all things from the beginning. We ask you to reveal the truth to us in the midst of lies, to open our spiritual eyes, to see beyond the deceptive appearances of this world. Pour out on us your Holy Spirit, O God, that we may stand firm against the wiles of the enemy. May your holy fire purify and strengthen us, preparing us for the days to come. In Jesus' name, we declare that no weapon forged against us will prosper, for we are hidden in you, our fortress and refuge. Lord Jesus, you who conquered the world and gave us the victory, we thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. In the face of the enemy's attempts to create a one-world religion that denies your supremacy, we stand up as ambassadors of your truth. Holy Spirit, anoint us with power from on high to proclaim the gospel with boldness and love. May our lives be living testimonies of your grace and truth. Father, give us discernment to recognize the subtleties of deception and courage to remain faithful even in the face of persecution. May we, like Daniel and his friends, remain unwaveringly committed to you, not bowing down to the idols of this world. Strengthen us, O God, to be those who steadfastly endure to the end. Almighty God, we praise you that even in times of darkness, your light shines even more brightly. We ask you to use us as instruments of your peace and truth in these last days. May your Holy Spirit guide us into all truth, enabling us to discern between good and evil, between truth and falsehood. Lord, wake up your church to the urgency of the hour in which we live. May we not be found sleeping, but vigilant and prepared for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pour out upon us a spirit of intercession that we may pray fervently for the salvation of souls and the protection of thy children from the approaching global deception. In Jesus' name, we declare that no strategy of the enemy will prevail against your church. Heavenly Father, as we prepare to face the challenges of the last days, we ask you to clothe us with the complete armor of God. Gird us with the girdle of truth, clothe us with the breastplate of righteousness, shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Give us the shield of faith to extinguish all the fiery darts of the evil one, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is your word. Lord, may we be found faithful when Christ returns. 
May our lamps be filled with the oil of your spirit, ready to meet the bridegroom. We thank you, O God, that victory is already assured in Christ Jesus. May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus, we pray and declare all these things, believing that we have already received them. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if this message has touched your heart and awakened in you a burning desire to delve deeper into biblical truths about the last days, don't hesitate. Click on the subscribe button now and activate the bell so you don't miss any vital content for your spiritual journey. Just as we pray together, united we are stronger against the wiles of the enemy. Join us in this mission to spread the truth and prepare hearts for Christ's return. Remember, every inscription is more than a number. It is a soul arming itself with divine knowledge for the days to come. Don't be left out of this spiritual battle. Subscribe now, share this video with those you love, and let's together raise up an army of believers ready to face global deception and proclaim the truth of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. The time is now, the choice is yours. Join us and be a part of this movement of God in the last days. As we close another chapter together, I know some questions might still echo in your mind. You may be wondering how to navigate the complexities of spiritual life and unlock a path of abundance and blessings. The journey is challenging, but you don't have to walk it alone. In the comments, you'll find a powerful key to this door many seek to open. The ebook, Discover Prosperity with God, the ultimate guide to overcoming spiritual challenges and living a life of abundance. This is not just any book. It is the fruit of years of research, experience, and profound revelations now within your reach. Imagine overcoming the barriers that prevent your spiritual and financial growth. Think of the comfort and security of living a life aligned with the promises of prosperity meant for you. This ebook is more than words on a page. It's a map to the treasure you deserve. Join the many who are already on a path illuminated by faith and knowledge. The power to transform your life is just a click away. Check it out now in the comments and start your journey to a life of fulfillment and prosperity. Remember, prosperity with God is not just a distant dream. It's a promise waiting to be fulfilled. With this guide, you're one step closer to making it a reality. Your success story begins today.